Next, we will begin to learn more about Rabbit user interface. Next, the ribbon located at the top of the screen will cover almost all the commands. The architecture tab models nearly everything. Every architectural element that appears 3D in your model is created from here. You will also find tools like rooms, levels, and grid. The structure tab creates beams and columns. If you are an architect or designer, you will use this tab for columns, beams, and foundation creations. The insert tab allows us to insert and load any external files to be added to the model or project. This includes images, CAD drawings and links, Revit files and families. The annotate tab adds 2D information to your views. Every tag, dimension, detailing line, revision cloud comes from here. They are added to a single view and are not part of the 3D model. The massing and site tab create the surroundings. For example, terrain, trees, grass, sidewalks, and other items surrounding the building. The collaborate tab allows graphic users to work with one another. In fact, it facilitates the design consultants to work effectively with the builders. You will find synchronized and reverse tabs as well as book sets here. The view tab puts your model on paper. All views are created from here. It also contains sheet and title block. The manage tab allows you to quick settings for your project. This tab is mostly used by BIM managers and advanced users. It also contains settings like line weight, parameters, phases, and design options. The modify tab adjusts and changes elements. This tab is frequently used to modify existing elements in your model. It also contains basic tools like move, copy, offset, mirror, and trim, etc. Next, we move on to the view control bar. This is where we make adjustments to our view, the scale of the project that we want to see. For example, this is at scale 1 is to 100. We can change them from 1 to 100 to 1 is to 10, for example. Do you notice that the lines of the walls become a lot thinner? Or for example, we can change them to 1 is to 500. Do you now notice that the walls all become a lot thicker? Okay. And for example, we can also make changes to the level of details we want to see. Now at this point right now, you notice it is in course display mode. So we can change this display mode from course to fine. Notice now we see a lot more detail within the walls itself. And also it will allow us to make changes to the type of graphic display we want to see in our model. For example, in a 3D view, this is in hidden line mode. This hidden line display mode. We can change this to, let's say, a shaded mode or realistic mode. And at the same time, we can also toggle whether we want to see shadows or not. The selection tray on the lower right hand corner, this is the area where we can decide what can or cannot be selected. 
when we see the red X symbol, it means that that selection category cannot be selected. The filter icon on the right allows us to filter elements if we were to make a selection with multiple items option. The options bar. This option bar allows us to customize new elements. This bar appears during the creation of new elements or using certain commands. The contents are different depending on which type of item is being created. The quick access toolbar. This toolbar contains frequently used commands. For example, save, open, undo, and redo, etc. We can add or remove any command from this bar. The project browser is used to access every sheet, view, family, schedule, legend, and groups in the project properties. The properties are used to modify selected elements. The information is different depending on what is being selected. 